This time I want to give you my first impression of two things. One, the Ziphos by Devil's Edge, and two, the Knightly Poleaxe by Arms and Armor. And I got these recently. This won't be the final review because I haven't tested these yet, but I wanted to talk about them already because based on my first impression, these seem to be an exception to the general rule of thumb when buying reproductions of historical arms and armor, namely, you get what you pay for. The uh, general rule is that something that is too cheap is usually a little fishy. And uh, this sword here costs less than $200. The poleaxe, on the other hand, is about 900 And both of them are a bit of an exception as far as my personal um, expectations are concerned. So, first off, the Ziphos. So this is a reproduction of an ancient Greek sword. And from what I've seen, this seems to be a pretty accurate reproduction. Um, it's, um, I don't think it's a one-on-one -on -one copy of any particular museum piece, even though I'm not sure. I actually haven't been able to find anything about the manufacturer. It just they suddenly appeared at Cult of Athena, and they don't seem to have a website, at least I couldn't find one. And uh, this I, I found interesting, but I didn't have the highest expectations based on the price. Uh, I may be a little biased here, but you know, generally anything under $200 or even under $150 as a sword, I'm a little skeptical in general, but um, based on the specifications, it seemed all right. And now that I hold it in hand, I'm very impressed, actually. Um, I don't know how they managed to make it that cheap with this kind of fit and finish, because everything is, is from what I can see so far, pretty much flawless. The way the wood fits together with the tang and everything, it's all smoothly polished and perfectly fitted. It is peened here, you can see at the end where the tang was hammered down and then polished. The guard, the way that's fitted, there's absolutely no gap there. So this is the kind of fit and finish that I expect from a $500 sword actually, or even more. So this is quite impressive. And even more impressive is the edge. This is the kind of sharpness that I expect from a short blade like this, but very rarely see because most reproductions, at least of European swords, are just not properly sharpened. This, on the other hand, is ludicrously sharp. I mean, this is as sharp as a good knife. And that's exactly, like I said, what I, what I would personally expect from a sword like this, because this is very light. This is less than a kilo. And with a light blade like this, you need it to be very, very sharp because you can't rely on the impact alone. It just doesn't have that much mass. So you need it to slice properly. So it's, it's really mainly against soft tissue, even though against bone it would also be effective. But yeah, this, this right here, this is the kind of edge. Please, manufacturers, do it like this. I, I can't stress enough. This is how it should be. And uh, long swords, in my opinion, should also be like this. Of course, there's always some debate as to how sharp exactly an edge should be. Um, it depends on the use, of course, and something that is intended to be used against tougher targets has to have a different edge geometry, of course. But the thing is, even, even a thicker edge, like, like a, a sturdier edge geometry, a relatively thick, convex edge can still be very sharp. There are axes with an edge sharp enough to shave hair. So it is possible to make a sturdy, durable edge that is still very sharp. So this is great. And I, I expect this to be extremely good for cutting. The handling is really impressive with how light and well balanced it is. I actually looked up the weight because I was wondering if they made the blade a little too thin and if it's actually too light but it seems to be appropriate for this type of sword. And it's um, really easy. Like even with the, the injured shoulder, I can very easily do you know, wrist powered cuts and you get the, the nice 
swoosh sound on proper edge alignment so you know exactly when you've done it right. Yeah, you can tell it's serious business when I use technical terms like swoosh sound. Anyway, so enough about this. Like I said, this is very, very impressive for the price. Okay, on to this beast here, the Knightly Poleaxe by Arms and Armor. Pretty impressive thing, and it's actually the same height as I am, with the spike included. And um, it looks a bit more ornamental than some other pole arms I've seen. This is a completely different price range. This, this one here costs $850 US dollars, that is. And there are a few complaints I have for the price. I'm glad to have it and I very much like the overall design but um, there are a few things that I, that I found a little disappointing. I'm of course going to talk more in detail about it in the final review. So it's got an ashwood pole. This one here is beveled. So it's, it's uh, overall rectangular and then the edges are beveled. So this is very comfortable to hold. It's got the butt cap here with almost like a pommel. No, you cannot unscrew it, but you could still end someone rightly with it if you crush their skull. <laughs> oh man, why do I even play along with this? Anyway, then there is the meat tenderizer. Well, it's actually meant for use against armor. So the surface of the hammer has these kind of pyramid-shaped projections. There is probably a technical term for them, but can't think of it. And um, these are meant to bite into the armor as the hammer is striking it. So if you're striking the curved part of the armor, instead of the hammer just glancing off, this is more likely to actually get a purchase on it and just, you know, smash into it, grip the, the metal. Also got the two spikes on the sides and of course the axe shape and the spike. It's got steel langets on all four sides and a rondel guard. So this could be very easily used to, to parry blades with. So overall, it's a marvelous weapon. Brutally efficient design, also has some aesthetic value, but there are a few things that I just don't really like to see, namely the way everything is fitted. And also like, it seems, it seems a little rushed in some areas like for example these pieces here that hold the guard in place they are basically all different lengths and the rivets are just not very cleanly done in many spots these pieces here on the side they have quite a noticeable gap in between there's also very noticeable gaps where the head is fitted or the spike is fitted over the head, I should say. And it's just, here's also a particularly unpleasant looking area. That just doesn't look as clean as I would expect for an $850 piece. Maybe I'm being too harsh here, too nitpicky, but I don't really like to see that. It doesn't affect the function, but it just doesn't look good. And another issue that I have is the edge. It basically has none. I can vigorously rub my hand against it. It's nothing. This is completely, I would almost call it blunt. I mean, it's very, very dull. And I, I'll freely admit, I don't know enough about pole axes to know whether or not the original ones had dull edges. I mean, you could argue that if, you, if you're using it against an armored opponent, if you want to strike the armor, then it shouldn't, it should be a pretty thick edge and it, it shouldn't be overly sharp because it would just be damaged. But at the same time, against armor, you have, you have the hammer, you have a spike, you have the spikes on the side. So I, personally, I would expect this to be a sharp blade to be used against flesh, you know, against unarmored opponents or uh, less heavily armored, like against the gambeson. This would certainly be useful. But for that, it would actually have to be able to cut. I don't think I'll be able to cut anything with this before I grind the edge pretty aggressively, really. Uh, you could split wood with it, but that's not exactly the point. 
for actual cutting, this edge is kind of useless. I mean, it would still break bones and everything. It would probably cleave into bone as well, but again, soft tissue, this, this wouldn't do anything. I don't expect it to loosen up, but we'll see, of course, as I test this. But it's just the way it's shaped is... Again, I, I would have expected a little more considering the price. So there you have it, an interesting case of more than you expect in one case and less in another. But don't get me wrong, even though I criticize some things about it, I still like it. I just, I just think it should be a more appropriate price would be something like five or six hundred maybe. But again, that's just my personal opinion. So after having done the tests, I hopefully have a more well-informed opinion and uh, maybe then I can say more about whether or not it's worth purchasing. That sword, on the other hand, I'm pretty sure I can already say that this is worth purchasing. Um, unless the blade just bends at, at the first cut or breaks or, or some suddenly mysteriously falls apart even though everything seems to be tightly assembled. Uh, unless that happens, this is definitely a winner. This should be really good. But let's leave it at that. I've been babbling for long enough. So thanks for watching.